am i audible uh, my yeah, voice is yes, sir, audible sir audible sir oh, okay, shall okay. we start the session sir uh, with your brief introduction of your bio data shall yeah 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 please uh, please start huh. thank you sir Good afternoon, all. I welcome the honourable speaker and all the participants for the second day thought session of the third Shatam online course on power electronics converters applications in microgrid and vehicular technology from 20th July to 24th July 2022, organised by Department of Electrical Engineering at NIT Raulkela. It's my privilege to present the bio of Professor Suvendra Samanta. Professor Suvendu Samantha received the BE degree from Bengal Engineering and Science University, Shivpur, Howrah, India in 2009. The MTech degree from Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, India in 2013. <coughs> and the PhD degree from Concordia University, Montreal, QC, Canada in 2018. He was with Coal India Limited from 2009 to 2011. From 2014 to 2016, he worked as a research engineer in the EC department, National University of Singapore. He also worked as a postdoctoral fellow in Freedom Research Center, North Carolina State University, USA, from 2018 to 2020. He received the prestigious Canadian Government General's Gold Medal Award for his PhD thesis. Currently, he is working as an assistant professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Kanpur. I heartily welcome Professor Suvendu Samantha to start the session. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mark Allah. So, yeah, you are also faculty in uh, the Department of uh, Electrical yeah, Engineering. I, I'm a PhD. Yeah, I am a PhD scholar uh, in the Department of Political. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you for the introduction and thank you all the participants. Okay. And uh, I uh, thank uh, the NIT uh, Raukela Electrical Engineering Department for organizing this uh, and inviting me. So I'll just share my screen. OK, so. Uh, is this uh, screen visible? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Uh, yes, sir, it is visible. <laughs> OK, thank you. And uh, so this is the topic, uh, the wireless power transfer for electric uh, vehicle battery charging. So I'll just make me. So the introduction of it is uh, we know that uh, the motivation behind working on electric vehicle because uh, uh, because of the pollution issues uh, that caused by the internal combustion engine and also uh, because uh, more more and more we consume the the petroleum product there is a uh, increase in price also of the petroleum uh, the the petrol and diesel so that also motivates to switch towards an alternative and sustainable way of transportation. So that sustainability is there in electric vehicle because uh, we can extract the power, electrical power from sustainable sources and then thereby we can feed it to the vehicle. And uh, so this issue is there globally and uh, different countries are trying to promote how electric uh, vehicle can be deployed in a larger scale. And uh, the switch is not uh, uh, very easy and therefore government is uh, promoting in a different way. Uh, in our country, there is something called FAME, faster adoption of electric and hybrid electric vehicles. And uh, that gives uh, a lot of incentives uh, in uh, uh, when a, a vehicle owner purchases a vehicle. And currently the major consumer for this or major uh, uh, percentage of electric vehicles are there in China and USA. 
and uh, because our topic will be mostly on electric vehicle charging system charging infrastructure so <clears throat> we'll look into different types of chargers first and uh, one of the couple of major challenge of electric vehicle is uh, one is the the energy density of the vehicle battery whereas in gasoline uh, in petrol and diesel they have uh, much more much higher uh, energy density and second challenge also uh, that is also another uh, important challenge that is bigger challenge that is uh, charging time so that is also another major problem and where gasoline based uh, vehicle can refuel within a very short time and electric vehicle takes a longer time so we'll with that we'll see the overview of the elect different types of uh, chargers uh, based on power level we can classify them and literature and also at the present time there are a lot of manufacturer they are producing the electric vehicle in the market so they classify in this way level 1 level 2 level 3 or the fast uh, charging and then finally the extreme fast charging and these are for based on power level and uh, different uh, uh, times or different uh, societies uh, classify them in a different way but uh, from level 1 to uh, level 3 and extreme fast charging these are increasing in order power level and uh, the another way to classify is uh, onboard charger and offboard charger onboard chargers are uh, low power charger and when the power level of the charging system is lower then associated uh, circuitry also will be lighter and everything can be placed in the vehicle itself and uh, and that is uh, that is very convenient but that is only possible for lower power level 1 and level 2 and when the uh, electric vehicle charging power level is higher then we have to keep most of the charging circuitry outside the vehicle so in the charging station basically and these are the fast chargers and if we keep uh, the specifically the pfc part the rectifier part we have input is ac and the rectifier circuit if we keep it in the charging station then the part of the uh, uh, power electronics uh, weight and volume is is uh, is eliminated so that is also another way it is called DC charging because the vehicle gets a DC input, whereas AC chargers are lower power and uh, and they get AC input uh, to the vehicle. And another way also classifying is uh, that unidirectional or bidirectional. So bidirectional unidirectional is known that uh, power can be uh, flowing only from the grid to the battery, but bidirectional also is very important because uh, 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 if we take a scenario that uh, there will be a lot of electric vehicle in the market and uh, this charging power of the electric vehicle will be very high. The energy uh, which uh, basically the uh, conventional vehicle consume the energy from petroleum directly and electric vehicle will do that same job through uh, the power grid and power grid will be highly loaded heavily loaded and to support the power grid um, uh, so bidirectional power flow is uh, very much necessary in future then next is isolated and non isolated <coughs> so uh, many times uh, in the terms of safety and other issues uh, isolation uh, uh, galvanic isolation is necessary and uh, through transformer isolation we we do the, this and uh, many times it can be avoided uh, to reduce uh, the cost so so that is also possible and finally the electric vehicle charging can be conventional that is conductive through wire and it could be wireless also and uh, this will be the topic for today the wireless power uh, uh, charging of electric vehicle Now coming to this uh, point that uh, wireless power transfer first uh, the the most important point is that what is the necessity of uh, doing this uh, uh, wireless power transfer. First of all, it is very convenient, safe and reliable. It is convenient because uh, we don't have to uh, put extra effort 
to to plug in and charge it is totally totally hand free and touch free so park and charge so that is the concept and safe because uh, um, we are uh, there is no uh, electrical conductor or electrical uh, contact is exposed so because of that uh, it is safe so everything is uh, is uh, embedded uh, in the diagram you can see that one part uh, the the one coil is embedded in the road and other is in the vehicle so nothing is exposed post uh, electrical part is not exposed so that way it is safe and reliable because uh, we are not uh, 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 so there is no wear and tear due to the metallic contact so there is no sparking and there is no uh, aging of the metallic contact suitable in harsh environment so there is uh, no discrimination whether the weather is uh, normal or whether is uh, very much heavy rain snow or any other uh, natural issues are there uh, then weather related issues are there so there it won't be affected at all and uh, these are uh, some benefits but the most important benefit which uh, in future could be uh, could be helpful. So one of the major challenge I spoke that uh, energy density of the the vehicle battery, and also the cost of the vehicle battery also is another factor. <clears throat> so if we implement this wireless power transfer in a strategic way, in a it's called opportunistic charging, then there is a uh, possibility to significantly reduce the battery storage. Some of the study uh, shows that battery storage can be reduced uh, up to. 80%, but uh, the, for that uh, dynamic charging is needed. With the static charging, also some percentage can be reduced. Some of the applications are electric vehicle, of course, and uh, then electronic gadgets uh, that we see uh, many of the uh, cell phone chargers and laptop chargers come uh, with this, uh, um, this wireless charging. This is the same technology where uh, electric vehicle is being charged and this uh, batteries uh, electronic gadgets are being charged. Fundamental principle is similar. And uh, then implants. <clears throat> Many of the biomedical uh, devices uh, at the present time, there is a lot of research going on on biomedical uh, uh, devices and uh, our power electronics is heavily involved in developing those biomedical devices, medical devices. And many of such devices require a battery and that has to be powered um, always. Uh, that has to be charged actually time to time the battery and how we can charge those batteries which are already uh, placed inside the body. So that is through wireless power. Then uh, chemical plants where there is a chemical hazard corrosion. So their wireless power can be a good application lighting data centers. These are the applications and uh, WPT is a emerging te technology and uh, many of the applications are are yet to be found out and uh, and and uh, these are just a few of the applications. <coughs> Inductively coupled different types of WPT. So now how we can realize this uh, uh, technology? Uh, WPT essentially is uh, if it is a magnetic coupling, the first one inductively coupled WPT. Basically, it is a transformer. And uh, if the transformer, if we put a small cut uh, in the core and isolate the primary side and secondary side, we can think of a core type transformer and uh, then both the sides are separated with a small gap. So that itself is a wireless power or contactless power transfer system. That is the first diagram. It is basically a transformer. And the second diagram, you can see that capacitive wireless power transfer. Uh, capacitor, if we see clearly, there, uh, see, uh, see properly that uh, it is a parallel plate. And uh, the medium in between is a uh, non-conducting, a dielectric medium. So basically it is also a contactless power and uh, if we replace the dielectric uh, with uh, air, that means putting nothing in between. So that becomes a wireless power. <coughs> so if we uh, see this uh, 
this uh, WPT in a very basic level. It is a transformer or a uh, parallel plate capacitor. One is called inductive and another is uh, called capacitive. And uh, now when we increase the air gap, uh, for example, for inductive specifically, the uh, uh, C, uh, the number C is written resonant inductive power transfer system. So here, because the air gap, if the air gap is increased, for example, electric vehicle application where air gap could be up to 30 centimeter, even up to 40 centimeter. So that large air gap, <coughs> how we can address if we have small air gap, let's say 1 mm, 0.5 mm. Um, so those are a different case scenario, but when we have several centimeters of air gap, the coupling will be very low and that require a compensation reactive power compensation in both the sides and uh, this compensation is basically resonance in another word um, capacitor inductor resonance therefore it is called resonant inductive power transfer this last uh, technology resonant inductive power transfer is the most popular and uh, this is commonly known as uh, inductive power ipt Now in electric vehicle charging application, the power conversion stages from power electronics uh, point of view, uh, these are the following are the power conversion stages. So in the diagram, uh, you can see that we have the regular power supply that is uh, uh, 120 volt uh, 60 hertz that is for North America and for us uh, it is 230 volt 50 hertz. <coughs> then we have the active rectifier and uh, then we have the high frequency DC to AC inverter and then we require compensation in both the sides. We have the uh, WPT. WPT inherently provides the galvanic isolation. It is essentially a transformer and uh, then in the secondary side uh, we need another compensation then finally rectifier and then battery. The rectifier could be uh, a passive or rectifier could be uh, usually it could be a active rectifier or a uh, combination of rectifier plus a chopper to control the charge of the battery. So uh, if we compare with a conventional uh, system that is a wired uh, system, so uh, this wired system and then wireless system, uh, the only difference is that this compensation if we see in the block diagram. So this is for the electric vehicle and a couple of slides are there for the other application such that we uh, it may not this WPT technology may not be uh, confined in in one application only. This is for the electronic gadgets. It has similar power conversion stages. We have AC to DC adapter DC conversion and also here uh, it is not completely given in transmitter. There is inverter also like earlier. CPT stands for contactless power transfer. This is synonymous uh, contactless power, inductive power, wireless power, capacitive power, something <clears throat> different types of uh, terminologies are used. Then we have uh, in the receiver side, there are two uh, parts. One is the battery charging side that is in the horizontal. You can see the battery charging circuitry and in the vertical side, we can see that our load uh, system is there. This is a one biomedical application. Uh, it is a hearing aid device, cochlear uh, implant. Many people have this hearing disability and uh, so doctors, uh, they surgically place a implant. Uh, um, so that device uh, requires a power and uh, there is a rechargeable battery, very small amount of power, very minute, but but because it is a uh, battery, one point of time it has to be charged. So WPT is a is an excellent uh, way to to transfer power. Now lighting, uh, lighting also many times uh, lighting could be uh, one can think of that uh, decoration and uh, and fan fancy thing, but uh, lighting also there could be an important application. Uh, uh, WPT can find an important application in lighting. So this is a airport uh, uh, lighting. Uh, 
this is a this first diagram uh, is a, an airport runway where many many LEDs are there. So airport runway could be as long as uh, uh, as lengthy as uh, two kilometer or or more. So uh, so that uh, runway uh, uh, in the both side of the 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 road there are LEDs and uh, the uh, the requirement is such that all the LEDs has to be connected in series such that they get same amount of current and the glow is same. And uh, that uh, means that our input voltage will be very high in the bullet point. It's uh, given 5 kilovolt and this will 5 kilovolt or more. And this uh, will create a safety related issues when the people are uh, doing maintenance in the system and uh, and there is a possibility of electrocution and one fatality per year during maintenance is reported and uh, water can get into the lights also high voltage and that's a problem and also another issue is that complete shutdown is needed for maintenance when one light is uh, damaged then whole system has to be shut down and then replaced so what is the easier way to solve it uh, that is through wireless power High voltage can pass, high voltage cable can pass through the underground and the low voltage in the second diagram you can see that uh, it is like a current transformer and there will be significant uh, gap or insulation provided and, uh, and then, then the secondary side um, will be um, getting the power that will be low voltage. So this is one of the work uh, done by Eaton Corporation and patented. And in data center, uh, the present day, the data centers uh, or cloud computing is uh, has so demand, so much of demand that uh, the the servers are uh, the uh, cloud, uh, the data centers are getting bigger and bigger, and uh, that means that power consumption also is increasing, and it is reported some of the data centers uh, consume as uh, much as 100 megawatt or more. So, but the old power systems architecture is that that are only 230 to 240 volt uh, will be given in the distribution system. So, this 200 megawatt at uh, distributing at, at, at 240 volt, it uh, it is uh, it is uh, very inconvenient because the cables will be very uh, bulky and uh, and inefficient system. So. Uh, the idea is uh, here is that we have medium voltage and from there we can directly send the that uh, voltage higher voltage to the data center rack which requires a 40 volt 48 volt dc so wpt can convert this uh, voltage uh, to 48 volt with uh, providing sufficient uh, insulation so this is also another work uh, have been reported in the literature so these are few of the applications and coming to the fundamentals of WPT uh, or IPT is, is it is essentially a two winding uh, transformer or coupled inductor. There is one more technology which I didn't add here. Uh, that is uh, the the microwave people or the radio uh, or the, uh, the the other branch uh, they do microwave uh, way of transferring power. So here our our is a near field and uh, that one is the far field. They could transfer power to a much longer distance, but the power level is generally low and also efficiency is significantly lower. And in electric vehicle and this kind of application require uh, the the inductive power, the one we are discussing now. It has a, a shorter distance and require a very high efficiency. Uh, above uh, above 90 90 percent of efficiency and that is that is not possible with those uh, technologies so if we see this inductive uh, uh, two winding couple inductor model here uh, one parameter is very low so i have uh, given here the open circuit voltage is proportional with the operating frequency mutual inductance and the primary coil current so that is the open circuit voltage uh, in the expression. And uh, because it is a, a loosely coupled system, mutual inductance will be very, very low. 
m will be very low and the induced voltage naturally is going to be very low and uh, and to address that we operate the wpt circuit at a higher frequency and uh, there is a standard for electric vehicle uh, the nominal frequency is about 85 kilohertz society of automotive engineers uh, they they set an standard 85 kilohertz plus minus 5 uh, kilohertz so we are talking a frequency of uh, which is about 2000 times than the power frequency so that way that uh, large air gap is addressed now there is still a challenge although we have increased the operating frequency the problem is in the primary side in the diagram if we see if we apply certain voltage let's say v1 that won't be able to drive a, a a a significant amount of current i1 won't be very high because we have a lot of leakage leakage flux and most of the voltage v1 will be dropped across the leakage and uh, to address it we need a compensation in the primary side so in the expression we can see that all the problems are solved our uh, uh, operating frequency is now very high and mutual inductance is low they are compensated properly and then uh, our primary coil current is going to be low and that is compensated through a uh, and that address is resolved that issue is resolved with a compensation capacitor still there is a problem in the secondary side this voltage uh, is induced but in the secondary side there is a again leakage and if we connect a load then most of the voltage will be dropped across the load uh, so ac across the leakage so therefore another compensation is required in the secondary side so this is the understanding of the um, the the wpt circuit since i have two hour time i thought uh, to show also time to time uh, one to simulation how this uh, fundamental concept can be understood so i hope the screen is visible so this is another uh, screen i am sharing in the zoom generally we need to share separately probably it's visible uh, so it's visible sir yes. okay okay thank you so it is a coupled inductor model there is nothing complexity here but it is not a regular coupled inductor it is a wireless power and you have here about uh, 30 cm of air gap you can think of this parameter uh, which has uh, this coupled inductor you can see around 63 micro uh, henry is the self inductance for primary same as secondary one, same number of turns are there mutual is only 9.5 it's about 15% coupling now uh, you can see that uh, um, let's say we are feeding a source in the primary side so naturally uh, we i don't need to simulate it to show that uh, if we provide here a 50k hertz we won't get anything in the output uh, much in the output side and uh, uh, but if we give here higher frequency 85 kilohertz and then then we can check how much we are getting in the output side so i'm just running the simulation okay so here few of the parameters are there so because i have given here current source and and we can see that uh, the first wave form form i am showing here is uh, uh, this uh, green color first wave form green color is the current so i have multiplied with 100 because voltage and current are put in the same um, window so this is a power sim this is one software pc sim, simulation software and in the secondary side we can see that almost nothing is there almost zero uh, voltage and uh, zero current is there and it is quite expected so i have um, proper resonance uh, that is let's say properly designed uh, amount of compensation is there for the primary circuit so that i'll place now in the primary circuit so first requirement is that we operate at high frequency 85 kilohertz for us uh, for electric vehicle 
we gave, but we were not successful to get uh, the output voltage. It's almost nothing in the output. Now we are providing sufficient compensation in the primary circuit. I'll talk about it that how this compensation will work and how to design all those things. So I have given the compensation. Then uh, first uh, we'll check the open circuit voltage. Let's uh, make it open circuit. I have given very high impedance, one mega ohm, so it is almost open circuit. So we can see here that open circuit voltage, uh, there is uh, some voltage induced here. It's about the peak of the, the last waveform is the secondary voltage, the red color. And there we can see that the voltage is about 25 volt. So there is some voltage induced uh, in the uh, in the uh, secondary secondary side. And then finally, what we have to do, we have to add another compensation in the secondary side to drive the load. Because uh, if we see the result, the last waveform. Uh, the middle one, IS, IS is uh, almost zero. It's in microampere. Uh, naturally, IS will be low because our impedance also is lower. So maybe I should run one more time to show that. If we reduce the impedance, the regular impedance, the power we will get will be lower. Uh, so here in the diagram we can see that uh, our peak of the uh, current secondary current is uh, that is the uh, the middle middle diagram is 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 uh, let me increase the size here okay so is 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 uh, about 0.75 ampere whereas vs open circuit voltage uh, was about uh, uh, some 25 volt, but when we connected the load, it reduced uh, to 0.75 volt. The open circuit voltage uh, in the load side is just 0.75 volt, which is not sufficient for our application. Uh, later, I'll show you that these parameters uh, we got for a 400 volt uh, to 48 volt uh, battery charging system. So. 48 volt battery we cannot run uh, with this uh, system. So the way is that uh, and the problem the reason reason behind it is that secondary side there is a lot of leakage and once we connect the load which is only one ohm and uh, when the current started flowing here most of the voltage drop uh, induced voltage is dropped across the leakage leakage part. Now if we add the compensation here. So we can see here that uh, the current, the uh, load current is about 25 ampere is is uh, 25 ampere and vs is uh, also around 25 of course it will be one to one uh, because i have one ohm only so there is the uh, the voltage and and current is sufficient in the load side so the essential point here is that we need compensation in both the sides and also we need a higher frequency uh, inverter. Another point uh, to work on WBT is uh, the the uh, the resonance perfectly tuned system. What it means is uh, we can compensate the circuit, but if, if it is perfectly comp compensated, then inverter don't need to provide any reactive power. Basically, there won't be any uh, reactive power circulation uh, 
between inverter and then WBT circuit. So for there are two diagrams here. If we are using a voltage source inverter, then our ideal case scenario will be like the first diagram. Inverter output voltage is this uh, uh, blue color square wave and then the current will be sinusoidal. Current is sinusoidal because we are passing it. Uh, the voltage is applied to a resonant converter. The, the current will be free from harmonics. And in the other side, we can see that the current is square. It is for current source inverter and the the, the voltage is sinusoidal. Uh, it is just a um, uh, just a, a dual of it. So what is the the uh, the key point here is that voltage and current they have a unity displacement power factor. The fundamental component uh, if we consider they have uh, unity displacement power factor. So reactive power um, demand from the inverter will be the minimum. Now regarding the compensation, uh, if we connect the capacitor in both the sides, then four possible combinations are there. We can connect in series uh, primary, series secondary and series parallel like that way four possibilities. And one key point here, if we have capacitor in the series uh, in the in the primary side, then VSI type of uh, inverters are uh, suitable because of the rule of interconnection. Uh, the the voltage source inverter can feed the high frequency uh, power to the WBT. Similarly, if the compensation in the primary side is if it is parallel, then CSI will feed uh, the 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 power. Now, few of the design equations are there. These are very much uh, standard equations, and any of the literature uh, one can find. So I didn't put uh, many of the descriptions here. It will be uh, uh, yeah. So so generally in the WPT circuit, the secondary side compensation is chosen as this way. The capacitor and uh, you can see it is just one by root LC. This is the resonance uh, formula and then the mutual coupling formula also we know m equals to k uh, root over uh, lpls primary secondary inductances and the the trans ratio that is n uh, so that is related with the uh, trans ratio is equals to uh, the or, or the other word in self inductance is proportional with the square of the number of turn and then another two equations are given here to replace the rectifier circuit. So let's say we have a WPT circuit. Then after that we have this uh, diode bridge rectifier and then the load and the rectifier could be either capacitive or it could be um, uh, the filter. Filter will be capacitive or the inductive capacitive. If we have a capacitive uh, uh, rectifier, then the overall equivalent impedance of this whole um, circuit is 8 by pi square R0 and if it is um, inductive uh, filter, then it is pi square by 8 R0. And these equations are quite standard. I am not uh, elaborating how to derive it. But uh, we uh, will discuss that how to find out uh, how to derive the C1 and C2 primary and secondary capacitance. Some places it is uh, written CP and CS, some places it is uh, C1 and C2. So um, please excuse for that uh, the typing uh, uh, mistake, but consider that C1 and CP they are same primary and uh, CS and C2 are same uh, secondary capacitance. Now for the series series, uh, you can see that this uh, diagram is for series series compensation. It is most simple. Uh, the secondary is calculated as uh, 1 by root uh, LC. So that way one uh, equation comes and in the primary side also. Uh, of course, primary side we don't calculate uh, directly that uh, 1 by root uh, C1 and L1 will be the capacitance. Rather, there is a formula. Uh, in the diagram, you can see that there is a impedance written ZS and then another one is written ZR and ZP. 
these three impedances are written in the diagram with an uh, with an arrow uh, so this zs is the equivalent impedance of the secondary circuit so for the series series we can easily see that impedance will be re only because c2 and l2 they have same uh, impedance at the operating frequency so they nullify each other and re only and then zr zr is the reflected impedance because of the coupling a small coupling uh, the secondary side uh, will be reflect will will cre create uh, or 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 induce secondary coil because of the current flow in the secondary coil there will be voltage induced that is the reflected impedance zr and how to calculate this zr we know the induced voltage that is uh, minus j omega m i2 secondary coil current this is the voltage and if we divide it by the current that is i1 then we get the zr and uh, in the secondary side we can apply um, uh, kcl uh, sorry in the secondary side we can apply kvl then we can find out the reflected impedance so that is the way to find out this all the um, the the capacitances but for all the secondary capacitance is uh, one by root lc with that formula but the primary capacitance is this one series parallel and uh, for the parallel topologies uh, the expression becomes uh, a little complex and one interesting thing to also note here that uh, for series series and series parallel the uh, the capacitance is not dependent on re re factor factor is not there so it is a load independent resonance for the first two and for the parallel series parallel parallel they are load dependent re factors are there now another uh, uh, key uh, mathematical uh, derivation would be to find out the gain uh, of the different types of topologies. It is a linear circuit. WPT is a linear circuit. There is uh, 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 no non-linearity. If you see the previous diagram like uh, the series series. Uh, so we can find out the gain by simply applying the Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. And these are the different gain and different compensation will provide different gain. And we have to be careful while choosing different topology because uh, some topology is suitable in different case. Uh, let's say we have a 400 volt to 48 volt uh, system, but some cases could be uh, 400 to 400 volt battery. So that will be suitable for other type of topology. Now one another uh, important uh, design uh, step will be to how to find out the mutual inductance, how much mutual inductance I need and how much self inductance I need and how much uh, uh, both primary and secondary, basically the turns ratio. All those parameters we have to uh, determine math mathematically. Uh, in the in the beginning, in the earlier stages, uh, generally researcher would do uh, different types of uh, uh, trial and error method. But there is a uh, there is a mathematical way to exactly find out the the mutual inductance and the self inductance of both the sides. So few of the expressions are there. I won't go into mathematical part, but I'll just give the idea how to find out uh, find it out. So here few expressions are uh, the this expression we have talked already secondary side. Uh, resonance uh, one by root lc formula and this is the reflected impedance uh, equation number seven and from eight to nine we can see that equation eight and nine uh, their primary side voltage that is the inverter output voltage and inverter output current and now inverter output voltage and current they are uh, they are for the first case. If we say it is VSI, VSI will give us uh, the square wave voltage, and the only we are interested only the fundamental. So from square wave 
we just uh, extract the fundamental. Equation eight and nine is only showing that uh, a square wave uh, and extracting the fundamental of it. And equation 10 and 11 shows the same expression for current source inverter. And uh, now in the secondary side, few of the mathematical expressions are derived. The induced voltage, we can see that induced voltage in the secondary side, that is J omega naught AMIP, is equals to the equivalent impedance of the secondary circuit and the current flowing through it. And uh, equation number 13 and 14, you can see that uh, the fundamental component of secondary side voltage and current when secondary side is series compensated. So 13 and 14 applies to the diagram um, which is uh, which is drawn here itself, Vs and Is. And uh, there are two possibilities here. If we have the capacitive filter in the rectifier circuit, then this capacitive uh, filter basically it is a voltage source and if we have a rectifier then the rectifier input rectifier input and the wpt circuit output they are the same rectifier input and wpt output uh, so so that fundamental we can extract so uh, from square we are just extracting the fundamental component and this is for the last two expressions are for the uh, inductive type of uh, uh, filter for rectifier side. So what we are doing here, that whole rectifier circuit we are trying to replace with a resistive load and we are uh, finding out that uh, the relation between the battery voltage and battery current that is V0 and I0 and the relation between that uh, with the WPT output voltage that is Vs and WPT output current that is IS or I2. And the final part is that uh, we know that uh, power flow from one coil to another coil. Power is uh, the we know that uh, induced voltage is omega M. Uh, IS uh, IP. A, a, a M omega naught IP is the induced voltage in the secondary side and secondary coil current if we multiply voltage into current is the transferred power, the wirelessly transferred power from primary to secondary. So that is the expression here. And uh, this is the same if we take ideal converter, then that is same as uh, equals to inverter output voltage uh, V square divided by the, the impedance. So these are the couple of expressions. And uh, here uh, in this expression, if we see most, most of the parameters are known. In a system, generally the battery voltage will be given, battery charging current will be given. And uh, so that means the power is given, voltage and current, and also the input voltage will be given. From there, the power is known, operating frequency 85 kilohertz, AM is unknown, and and uh, IP and IS. So these are also uh, IP is uh, not known and IS is in terms of IS can be known in terms of the the battery charging current. So that way it is known. So only the M IP is unknown factor. So OK, that part is not dis discussed here. So uh, yeah, IP. How to calculate this IP primary coil current? Uh, because primary voltage, if we know, uh, then uh, we can see that uh, the second expression uh, here, uh, the VP is known. This is the fundamental of the 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 source voltage uh, after inversion, and uh, then the R is the load, that is V naught by I naught omega naught square m square. So m is the unknown factor. So m can be found out from here. So this is just a uh, one of the technique we discussed that we can find out the M and other parts are also not uh, discussed here. Few of the papers uh, we have on it. Uh, once we know the mutual inductance, we have to assume the 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 coupling factor because uh, the coupling factor 
depends on the the air gap and also the the size of the coil generally a rule of thumb is that uh, uh, if we go let's say more than 30 centimeter or so um, uh, the the coupling factor will be less than uh, 20% so so a uh, a typical value of a coupling factor we can choose and then accordingly lp and ls we can find out uh, from the equation um, the the mutual inductance m equals to k root uh, lp into ls so these are the few uh, topolo uh, topologies uh, series 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 parallel parallel series and parallel parallel one table just i have shown here it's a 2 kilowatt system and uh, input voltage for the series series uh, parallel series and parallel parallel they are 400 volt input and uh, some cases the voltages are little different first three we have highlighted uh, because these are the parameters has to be given the highlighted uh, um, parameters has to be given um, and it is dependent on the type of battery we are using and type of source we are using and the next one coupling factor we have to assume um, so 0.3 and less will be the coupling factor for EV in WBT. And, uh, and if we follow the previous procedures, then we'll find out the, the, the magnetic circuit parameters. And the compensations are more easier, those uh, ex expressions we have already discussed. Here, some of the simulations are there. Uh, maybe instead of discussing the simulation, better I'll show just one set of simulation here. So series series uh, is the most uh, uh, simple one. So you can see that uh, we have uh, represented the WPT as a coupled inductor. You can uh, um, show it as a transformer also to winding transformer. And uh, these parameters, self inductance and mutual inductance, they are related with the uh, leakage inductance and magnetizing inductance of a transformer. So that conversion we have to just do. So once we uh, represent our WPT system in this way, and we have designed the compensation capacitor. And so this is a case scenario where we are using 400 volt uh, DC input. This DC input is, uh, is, uh, is uh, obtained from a power factor corrected rectifier single phase power factor corrected rectifier and uh, the output is a battery uh, and uh, I just kept a uh, little less uh, than uh, 48 volt just to show that exactly 48 volt uh, here because battery has an internal impedance we can put here 48 volt also there is no problem because uh, then we have to design it exactly for 49 volt there will be extra volt voltage drop so this is the compensation uh, circuit series series and the rectifier is just a passive full bridge diode rectifier. And uh, we are using here a capacitive filter uh, to filter out the high frequency uh, uh, that is coming from the WPT. And here inverter circuit, you can see that it is a simple H bridge. Uh, it is not H bridge, it is hub bridge uh, uh, inverter. One leg is replaced with a uh, capacitor the number of uh, switch count is less and uh, just one thing uh, extra thing you may see in the circuit is uh, that there is one inductor and uh, and a register uh, there in uh, in parallel and the reason we have connected it because uh, once you connect a battery in the uh, load side and if you see the capacitor for the high frequency the the battery doesn't provide much of impedance. So if we uh, don't provide any impedance to the high frequency, this filter will not be effective. All the high frequency from this uh, this uh, diode bridge uh, from this rectifier link recti rectifier DC bus all will pass through the battery. So that is the reason we have connected this small inductor and that will create, of course, oscillation and uh, uh, 
and the small damping is there. So that is the reason we can get pure DC in the uh, battery DC current. So if we run the circuit. First, uh, we will see the. The battery charging current. So it is designed uh, roughly about uh, uh, if we calculate we have 48 volt and we have 60 ampere. So that is uh, OK. This is about 2.8 kilowatt. Uh, roughly around 2.8 kilo kilowatt it is designed. And. Uh, and also another important uh, feature to see how much. Um, reactive power this inverter is feeding. Because we have designed these capacitors. Now they should compensate the reactive power consumed by this loosely coupled system. So, so we can see also this inverter output current and output voltage so that we have an idea that how much reactive power uh, demand will be there from the inverter. So VP and I1. So VP is a square wave. Uh, because it is a voltage source inverter and uh, and the control will talk about it little bit uh, control. Uh, we can do duty cycle modulation as well as frequency modulation. Generally for a resonant converter frequency modulation is often adopted uh, to to um, get soft switching always. But duty cycle modulation also is possible. So this is the inverter output voltage. We will see the inverter output current. So the scale is a little smaller because current. We will just multiply with a factor. So this uh, compensation uh, CP uh, or uh, C1 and C2, they are designed in a way that uh, we get the. Uh, let me reduce a little bit. I'm just scaling up the the inverter output current. They are designed in such a way that. Uh, the the displacement power factor is uh, is uh, on almost un unity. Slightly lagging is there. Very minute lagging is there such that uh, it it helps in soft switching. Otherwise uh, it's almost uh, very close to unity. So inverter will feed very bare minimum reactive power such that we uh, get the soft switching of the inverter switches. So this is overall WPT circuit system. Now uh, one can connect the the capacitors in parallel also. Yeah, this is another circuit. So you can see here. Uh, first let's uh, first focus only in the. Uh, the the parallel series uh, uh, resonant tank only. So this is the WPT circuit. And we have parallel compensation. and you can see that the capacitance values are entirely different. Although we have a 400 volt input, we put here a similar battery 48 volt battery. But. Our compensation here is 23.26 and 55 microfarad. And in the series series case. Uh, it is uh, 26 uh, nanofarad and 415 uh, no. nanofarad. So there is a uh, complete entirely different value of compensation is there if our topologies are different. And uh, this is a CSI current source inverter. And um, to, we don't have a readily available current source. So what we do is that we have voltage and small inductor we connect in series such that uh, it becomes a current source. And then we can operate it. Uh, this also we checked it. Uh, and it's operating and. Uh, it also gives roughly around 60 ampere. It is a 59 ampere. So. This is the way to design the uh, the compensation and uh, the 
magnetic circuit parameters. Now, few of the merits and demerits are there uh, of this uh, WPT circuit. For series series, one major problem is that if the load circuit load is not there or the load is very low, some load is there, but the load is uh, is less. Then we can see that the reflected impedance here will be low. And VSI will see a very low impedance and sudden uh, current rise will be there. So that current uh, surge uh, has to be stopped through a first uh, first control. Then uh, the similar, of course, the benefit of the series series is that it is load independent resonance. And series parallel also similarly load independent resonance, but a problem similar problem will arise if the secondary circuit tree is missing. So that time also it becomes only a series LC circuit uh, from VSI point of view. So there has to be a fast control. Uh, some of the literatures also report about this parallel series and parallel parallel topology. And few of the merits are mentioned uh, that when we connect a parallel capacitor in the resonant tank, so parallel capacitor will provide low impedance to the high frequency. So harmonic current will pass through the capacitor and coil will receive uh, very high quality sinusoidal uh, voltage and sinusoidal current that means. And also another merit is mentioned that when we connect, connect an inductor, uh, this limit the fault current. But the demerit side is that uh, extra inductor will, will add extra weight and the uh, system will be bulkier. Although this inductor won't be in the vehicle. So in WPT, till the transmitter coil, that will be uh, the stationary part that will be in the char uh, charging station part. Now, uh, different uh, considering these different merits and demerit. Uh, in the literature, mostly people use the voltage source inverter and uh, uh, series resonant tank. Uh, as one of the problem I have mentioned series. So people go for complex uh, resonant circuit. It is called first one is called LCL. So this is also load independent resonance, but uh, and also. It um, it eliminates the limit limitation that uh, that surge current. Um, so that surge current issue is not there, but the demerit is that. VSI output current is highly non non sinusoidal. One of the sample waveform I have just uh, presented here and throughout literature you will see that uh, LCL resonant tank uh, draws a current highly non sinusoidal square wave uh, blue color one is uh, uh, the voltage and non sinusoidal uh, green color uh, current uh, one is the current. And uh, there was another one that is uh, the L uh, LC LC resonant tank. So it is essentially a LCL resonant tank and extra capacitor is connected with the in series with the coil. Extra capacitor uh, people connect to nullify some of the leakage effect directly. So this uh, overall circuit will see a smaller amount of leakage when we connect extra capacitor in series with the coil. Now this is uh, this will be the another topic I'll be discussing. So till now if anyone Sorry, I didn't put it uh, full screen. Uh, till now, if anyone has any question, um, please ask. So this was a basic part. Uh, one just one little advanced uh, topic I'll discuss and then I'll end. Uh, any question from the participants? Uh, OK. So I'll go to the final point. So if we see the WPT and compare with with a com conventional uh, WPT uh, co conventional wired charging system, WPT coils are much larger. And uh, and and uh, the efficiency also is slightly lower 
Al although it is not entirely very uh, low efficiency, it is always uh, above 90% efficiency is achievable. But uh, the the challenge, one of the challenge is that uh, the overall system will be bulkier and cost effective also because of the larger coil. So how to counteract and how to how to address those challenges? It won't be entirely possible to 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 make it like a conventional uh, charging system, but up to certain degree it can be reduced. Um, so one of the way to to do it is uh, to reduce the uh, number of power conversion stages. So we are converting power from grid voltage to the high frequency AC so that we can do in a single stage. So the expected merits will be higher efficiency. One stage is reduced. So second merit could be the lower component component count and it could be compact eliminates um, eliminates short light bulky DC capacitor. Now uh, the last point uh, may or may not be valid because uh, let's say if the battery requires a fixed DC current. So for that we need to have a uh, large electrolytic capacitor. Because uh, when we are uh, driving power, we are we are driving power from a line frequency. Line frequency has a double uh, of power frequency ripple. OK, so that can be eliminated uh, by means of electrolytic capacitor. So we have to see if the battery uh, can accept uh, this 100 Hertz uh, frequency. OK, uh, then it's OK. Otherwise, we have to connect a uh, electrolytic capacitor in the load. Now there is a challenge that control goals. Uh, we have to meet the control goals. So what are the control goals uh, to meet here? One is high quality source current. Our input is the grid and uh, from the grid if we do not draw the unity power factor, so so then uh, then the power quality and all those challenges will will come in the picture. So the SEC converter matrix converter has to take care the power factor correction. And provided that we are not uh, assuming that we are not adding any extra converter in the rectifier circuit, then load power uh, flow control has to be also met by this uh, single converter. And finally, soft switching also has to be achieved because we are operating at high frequency. Possible solution, uh, most of the reported literature, they uh, use the series series resonant converter because it is uh, well uh, known and well uh, established in WPT world. So and therefore we connect a voltage source inverter uh, to drive the series series uh, WPT circuit. And since it is directly AC input, so we need the the uh, the switch, the S1, S2, S3, and S4. They are uh, not the regular switch, rather it is a um, bidirectional voltage uh, blocking and then bidirectional current controlling devices. So basically two of the MOSFETs, power MOSFETs, uh, we we connect uh, back to back. So that uh, that way it is a uh, four quadrant switch. Now if we see this structure, this uh, switching circuit structure and see from the source side, from the source side, it is a buck derived configuration because uh, we have the voltage source and then the switching network and then the load circuitry. So buck converter has that same structure. And this type of structure has a problem that it cannot meet the power factor correction. So here in a uh, in a diagram way, we we in a in a graphical way we have presented that uh, if we meet power factor correction then our power profile will be like the red color one and uh, so that is the 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 power profile at uh, the the point when we have power factor correction and 
and uh, the 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 main problem with this type of profile, uh, let's assume a case that we have a battery 400, whatever a battery is there. Uh, let's say 400 volt battery is there. And in the previous circuit, if we have let's say 400 volt battery at the output and our input voltage is changing from zero to uh, whatever the peak voltage, let's say 325 volt for um, the regular single phase uh, case scenario. So if we have buck derived configuration, once the the output voltage is uh, is uh, uh, higher than the input voltage, the control is completely gone. Com uh, there will be no control uh, over the 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 circuit. So the maximum duty cycle will be reached once the input voltage and output voltage becomes same and once the out input voltage becomes lower than the output then uh, the maximum duty cycle will remain at the same point so that's why in power factor correction generally a boost derived uh, uh, converters are used so if we uh, change the same WBT circuit to a boost derived structure, that means we have an inductor first LS and then we have the switching network. Same matrix converter is there single phase. And we have the resonant tank. Now this time if we have inductor in the before the switching tank, we cannot use a series uh, resonant tank. Uh, it is it will be a error in rule of interconnection uh, then because our inductor we are connecting with a another uh, WBT inductor in series through switch so so therefore we need parallel capacitor so that's why parallel series uh, resonant tank uh, will be a suitable choice so the here is uh, one of the possible topology we uh, worked on it so uh, so we have the the inductor first it is like the current source inverter only only thing is that uh, since we have input ac we have uh, four quadrant switches and uh, during the positive half uh, four sets of switch we are uh, uh, triggering and during the negative half the other four switches will be triggered so essentially it is a current source inverter but operating uh, changing over in every half cycle of the power frequency. Now rest of the circuit uh, is uh, is like conventional WPT circuit. We have the resonant tank. Uh, the, then we have the rectifier circuit. One just a small modification is there. There is a series capacitor and uh, uh, like I mentioned earlier that this uh, series capacitor can help to nullify some of the leakage directly. So it is essentially a parallel series resonant tank where additional capacitor helps in nullifying some of the leakage. And uh, if we see the steady state operation, I'll just speak the essential part and that is uh, when the diagonal switches are on S1 and S1, S2 dash uh, are operating, it is just like a conventional boost converter which is connected uh, turn of period uh, turn of period that means boost converter inductor is connected with the load and the another state is that when one leg is completely uh, um, basically both the switches in one leg is, uh, is on so inductor is charging uh, is being charged uh, so in inductor current will rise this is similar to turn off uh, turn on of a boost converter where uh, the inductor directly gets connected with the uh, source and finally because it is uh, uh, the the inverter circuit so there has to be other stage uh, where off diagonal switches are conducting so we can see that it is essentially a fundamentally a uh, operating in the principle of boost converter. And regarding the design, uh, it is very much similar with the earlier design. Uh, some of the expressions are uh, written here. The a relation between the the coil 
secondary coil current with the charging current secondary voltage and the 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 battery voltage this is the relation it is based on the fundamental uh, 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 fundamental component of this uh, this uh, voltage and current in the ac side and uh, the the circuit design is uh, c equals uh, the the secondary side capacitance is equals to in the form of 1 by root lc omega is equals to root lc that formula is used uh, and then and then primary capacitance is found out based on the resonance principle and uh, rest other parameters uh, can be calculated through the power flow that we have discussed uh, in the previous uh, part and some of the expression of voltage and current stress uh, it is a linear circuit in the uh, only the if we consider the resonant tank so we can easily calculate every component voltage and current and control uh, this converter uh, as i mentioned uh, resonant converter can be uh, and in fact generally is controlled through the frequency modulation but it can be controlled with the duty cycle modulation in this case uh, this is a control with a duty cycle and uh, there are two loops and uh, this two loop uh, control is very very uh, standard and it is used for any kind of pfc power factor corrected uh, uh, converters outer loop controls the 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 output in this case we have battery we are controlling the charging current and uh, here it is mentioned voltage controllers is actually it is current controller and the output of the uh, out, uh, outer loop controller gives the reference for the input uh, system input uh, input loop and here it is the source current amplitude if we multiply with the pll with the phase information we get the reference of the input current instantaneous value and then if we compare and, uh, and uh, if, uh, feed it through current controller then we generate the pwm signals for all the uh, eight switches here these are four switch symbol but essentially there are eight switches and now there is uh, the modeling of uh, the 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 converter and uh, for the inner loop we have the input you can see the the second equation where gi is written gi is equals to is uh, tilde by d tilde so we have uh, the input as a duty cycle and the output is the source current grid current so uh, the detailed derivation i have uh, not uh, we have not presented here so in the reference uh, papers uh, it can be found out but uh, uh, this is a first order system and uh, many simplifications have been done so it becomes a first order system and we have a compensator to to um, get uh, the required phase margin and also to get uh, the the necessary uh, settling time the inner loop has to be significantly fast uh, because we need to track the uh, 50 hertz power frequency this is the uh, principle of power factor corrected rectifier and this is the control loop for the outer loop uh, the input uh, is the the uh, source current and then the output is the load current and this uh, inner loop uh, transfer function uh, can be divided into three part one is the the inverter transfer function then resonant tank transfer function and then the rectifier transfer function three uh, are derived and this also essentially with a simplification it comes to be a first order system and then we can easily control it we have chosen a, a integrator uh, to to get a phase margin of 88 degree and also we have a settling time of 750 millisecond it's pfc so generally the outer loop is uh, is uh, a bit slower and one slide i just have uh, for uh, this uh, ipt wpt coils 
this coil also is a uh, is a equally lengthy topic and uh, and a proper coil design also is very important in the beginning i have presented that wpt is uh, is similar to a winding uh, transformer or couple inductor but the 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 coil structure is not like that uh, generally it's a planar coil and uh, and uh, in the beginning stage people used uh, the circular type of coil uh, or square type of coils and sometimes they used ferrite cores in the first diagram you can see that ferrite core is there fer ferrite plate it's a solid ferrite and later people figure out that uh, in electric vehicle the the it's a moving system and ferrite it is brittle so it's better to uh, use the ferrite bar that is the second diagram instead of ferrite core and that also reduces uh, the weight of the system and less bulky then the third one uh, is a is a similar type uh, to say similar as uh, the winding transformer but but uh, where the primary side and secondary side flux are, are common mutual flux path is there uh, that area is much larger in a transformer generally where we wound the coil and the the all the places are uniform but in this case uh, it's a very large uh, much larger space when primary and secondary flux uh, common uh, point is there the structure uh, so to mention that first uh, two structures are uh, proposed and and widely used by university of auckland uh, in in new zealand they were one of the the pioneer people for this uh, new age wireless power transfer university of auckland uh, and and the second one is uh, from uh, from a, a korean university uh, uh, KAIST, K I S T, uh, Korea Advanced Institute of uh, Science and Technology, uh, Dijuang. So they used the second type of structure, and in fact, uh, they implemented also in their uh, campus this type of uh, WPT coil for their university uh, transit uh, buses. And the third diagram uh, in the beginning stage, it was also proposed uh, by the University of Auckland. And later it uh, became very much popular and and, and uh, started uh, it, it's being used uh, very widely. This is called DD type of coil. And what it is uh, done here, it is a uh, circular or a elliptical elliptical shape of uh, coil, but uh, it is just one coil itself with the two loops uh, that you can see and then the ferrite bars are there it is entirely a single coil and the merit of this uh, this uh, coil is that in one loop the current uh, direction is uh, one and in the other loop current direction is reversed so if one loop is generating at one point the north pole then other loop will will become the south pole so because of uh, opposite pole we can understand that uh, the flux has a complete path and the coupling is higher and it has a better uh, uh, misalignment tolerance so because of those merits uh, people are switching this type of coil and later on people started working on polarized coil and what it means polarized coil that uh, this wpt coil dd pad is there here two loops are there and these two loops can be fed from two different converter and we can control the power and uh, and uh, and uh, other things much better so th th those those are called polarized coils so uh, we uh, worked on uh, the the conventional circular coil only and uh, the circular coil was developed for 1.2 kilowatt system and the resonant tank capacitors uh, we need to use a film capacitor because it's a high frequency uh, ac capacitors are good and multiple capacitors in parallel are good because the esr will be quite low uh, and 
and this this is the the eight switch uh, circuit system and then the rectifier circuit Uh, now, uh, in our laboratory, there could be a challenge that uh, how to measure precisely the precisely the 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 uh, mutual and self inductances. We can use the LCR meter, uh, but still we need a precise value and 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 uh, and make uh, we need to confirm it that this number is correct. So this is a simple circuit uh, we developed and. Uh, uh, we there is a precharged uh, film capacitor. Uh, the circuit we can see, and once we uh, charge the capacitor, and uh, this precharged capacitor, if we connect with the coil, then the coil will resonate uh, at their self uh, oscillation, self resonating frequency. This capacitor and inductor, and if we measure or if we see the waveform in oscilloscope, then uh, we'll see that expo a, an exponentially decaying oscillate, oscillatory signal, oscillatory voltage waveform, and uh, that frequency will provide us the exact value of the inductance. And uh, uh, and here the capacitor has to be known. Generally, this film capacitor has a very uh, um, uh, uh, less variation in their value. So if it is a ten. Um, nanofarad, the the tolerance is is very uh, low. So uh, first set set of uh, experiment we have done with the resistive load. The reason we have done with the resistive load because uh, uh, through our experiment we found out that uh, that many of the uh, literature actually worked on regi resistive load, and they. They got certain result, but we, if we use a resistive load, uh, we we will get certain result. But if we use the real battery, then our result might be different. So first, look into a, with a resistive load. So this diagram uh, in the bottom diagram, you can see this is the circuit. Instead of battery, there is a, a, a register, uh, a resistive load. So we can see here the middle diagram. Uh, the left and right uh, waveforms, uh, left and right uh, side uh, diagrams are for zoomed version of the same middle diagram. So middle one, uh, the green color source, the source voltage, then uh, yellow color is the source current, then inverter voltage and inverter current. Inverter voltage and current, uh, we will see only a dark uh, envelope. Because uh, inverter voltage and current is 85 kilohertz, whereas source voltage and current is uh, 50. Uh, it is 60 hertz here, 60 hertz. So, uh, so this is the uh, waveform, and uh, the THD obtained here is 4.1 percent, and it is well within the um, IEEE 519 specified standard limit. Are the coil voltage and current waveforms? We can just see the middle waveform that uh, is the the envelope line frequency envelope, and if we zoom, then uh, we'll see the switching frequency pattern. And our topology here is pre parallel resonant converter. Coil gets a very close to sinusoidal voltage and current. In the secondary side, the the voltage and current waveforms are shown. The voltage has a notch we can see in the secondary side because of the rectifier because uh, this rectifier voltage is uh, is appearing in the coil capacitor secondary side capacitor cannot take uh, the the, um, the 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 this voltage this voltage will appear across the coil because uh, it is a, a step kind of waveform capacitor won't uh, uh, block the high frequency uh, capacitor will pass the high frequency inductor will block the high frequency voltage. Uh, these are the inverter output and uh, rectifier um, uh, rectifier input voltage and current uh, profiles. And uh, we performed uh, one uh, step response. Uh, we have two loops and uh, the first uh, uh, waveforms showed the performance of the inner loop that we were able to uh, 
uh, get the sinusoidal uh, grid current and uh, how to check the outer loop is uh, to provide a step command in the in the load uh, here it is a current control in the load so load current we are changing so the middle diagram again we can see that step applied at one point and uh, from 75 percent of the load we reached to suddenly we demanded 100 percent of the load so it took about uh, 750 millisecond which is our designed um, uh, value of the outer loop and within that time it uh, it reached to the uh, full load and uh, the waveforms are as follows here that uh, we have the first wave, uh, top waveform shows the uh, grid voltage then grid current and then uh, the the load current if we see the zoomed view of the load current i not it is rectified sign 50 hertz uh, sorry 60 hertz rectified sign because here we don't we didn't provide any electrolytic capacitor if we do not provide any electrolytic capacitor in a uh, uh, in a in a system uh, grid grid connected converter system the load current profile will be the rectified sign only now uh, we have stiff uh, dc voltage load this is to just to uh, see that uh, uh, if we have stiff dc voltage load it is uh, then similar to a battery and how it performs will it uh, still work uh, for power factor correction so because we have the boost derived configuration so it still uh, works uh, as a power factor corrected uh, converter the middle uh, diagram shows the inverter uh, sorry the, the the input voltage grid voltage then yellow grid uh, current then the matrix converter uh, uh, or other word inverter output uh, voltage and current waveforms similar to earlier and here thd slightly higher it is 4.5 percent but it is still um, uh, acceptable below 5 percent uh, uh, limit now it is the uh, uh, it is showing the the inver uh, uh, the the uh, coil voltage and coil current profiles so primary coil voltage and current and secondary coil voltage and current uh, if you look uh, a little carefully the primary voltage and current earlier case it was a sinusoidal envelope now it is not following a sinusoidal envelope uh, the reason is that we have a non-linear load earlier case we have a, we had a resistive load so that that is a, a a linear type of load and here if we connect in a rectifier a steep dc then it is a non-linear so the controller needs to put uh, additional effort so to 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 maintain the power factor correction here is a step uh, uh, response we can see here in the middle diagram the last waveform that is the the uh, blue color uh, waveform here current profile is no more a rectified sign rather it is a uh, fixed dc because we have connected we have connected a electrolytic capacitor so the step applied uh, from 80 percent of the full load to to full load and it took uh, roughly around 750 millisecond to settle and reach to the steady state and uh, we can see that before transient and after transient in both cases our grid current is is sinusoidal so the the comparisons uh, we have uh, presented here that um, that because of the two loop control and also for using this uh, this uh, boost derived uh, uh, con conf configuration both the control have been have been achieved so in summary uh, we uh, discussed in the beginning that uh, uh, considering the environment considering the sustainability 
and uh, sustainable transportation electric vehicle is is a is a preferred choice and uh, and the future uh, transportation will be going towards electric vehicle and we talked some of the limitations of the electric vehicle uh, we talked about the different type type of charging uh, classifications and we talked that how uh, wireless charging has the potential to to uh, to address some of the challenges of electric vehicle and then we talked uh, about uh, different type of wpt compensation and how to design compensation and then some simulation results also i have shown and then finally we talked about the the challenge of uh, wpt and addressing some of those challenges with single stage wpt uh, circuit and uh, then we have shown also uh, the experimental uh, results experimental setup so we'll end here and i thank uh, everyone for your kind uh, attention and thank you for the invitation if there is any question we can ask uh, sir good evening sir huh. yeah my, myself uh, shashank um, sir inductive type uh, charging station is there exist in india uh, so far my knowledge goes uh, in india commercially it is not uh, installed yet uh but uh, uh in a research level it is going on but commercial level mostly uh, it is there in some countries i know probably not even all the uh, the the western countries uh, at least in us it is there and uh, south korea it is there and new zealand and uh, and uh, probably some other china or somewhere it could be there but it is not there in a large larger scale wpt sir you got muted sir please please unmute your audio uh, am i audible now yeah now it's fine sir okay 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 uh, uh sorry if uh, i got uh, just mute uh, so in india i think uh, i'll just uh, briefly repeat that in india so far my knowledge goes commercially it is not uh, implemented it's all in the research level but few of the countries they have uh, commercially implemented not in larger scale uh, those countries uh, like south korea i mentioned during my presentation and us some of the cities and uh, also in in uh, new zealand okay these are the places i knew and uh, wpt requires still more maturity so that was the point i was telling and uh, the research that's why it's a emerging research area for the researchers because uh, uh, some of the issues are still yet to be addressed uh, um one one of the key point could be the the cost also like the the charger i mentioned in second part of the presentation the coils are quite uh, large and uh, cost effective cost all cost also involved we need lead share and uh, and also placing the coils in the road in the uh, vehicle and then the some of the safety related concern few factors are there uh, those are stopping those are blocking to implement the wpt in commercially yeah sir okay, thank you uh. the, the participants can interact with the speaker if you are having any queries you can unmute yourself and you can interact with the professor uh, any other queries right. from the participants in i think uh, there are no um, uh, no more queries from the participants. Uh, thank you, sir, for being with us uh, and for your informative and thought-provoking session. Uh, 
uh, i hope the participants might have got benefited from this session and even uh, i too feel uh, this session is like a uh, little bit uh, uh, quite different from the regular ones uh, like as it is a wireless power uh, technology i really i also enjoy it thank, uh, you, th thank you thank you uh, mr kartikya yeah. thank you professor arnab uh, so uh, thank, thank you, you sir <laughs> <laughs> Yes, okay. It's a very uh, nice presentation. Thank you, sir, thank for you. giving your time to us. Uh, thank you for interacting. <laughs> thank you for invitation. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Nice to meet you. Bye, sir. Nice to meet you. Uh, bye.